Animated viewpoints are useful for informing the viewer where a particular issue is relative to the entire model. From seeing this view, for example, we may not know specifically where these intersecting ducts and joists are in the model, especially if there are various assemblies like this other places in the model. So we're going to create a series of viewpoints that progressively zoom out more and more from the point of interest each time. We can disenable the section box in order to see the entire building. We'll save this viewpoint. Then we'll zoom a bit out and create another viewpoint. Let's zoom out further and save a new viewpoint. And zoom out yet again, maybe even panning out and rotating. When we've completed all of our viewpoints for the sequence, let's right-click in, in the viewpoint space and choose Create Animation. We will drag these six different viewpoints from which we will make the animation sequence, placing them in reverse from six to one so that the animation zooms us into the location from outside. You should know that you can right-click and choose Edit in order to change the animation duration. We'll leave our duration as it already is in the default. Now let's go to the Animation tab and click Play. We can see how the animation is a smooth transition frame to frame bringing us right in into the issue we want to highlight. By exporting this animation out as an AVA file, we're able to send out to our design an animation showing not only the issue, but its context. Navisworks also features object animation within the composite model scene. The possibilities are endless, however some examples could include the opening of doors, movement of vehicles or cranes around a construction site, animation of mechanical components or machinery or production lines, and more. Let's start in this viewpoint looking at a conference room door that we can animate to open and close. Click the Animate window. From this window, click Add and select Add Scene. Let's select the door. We'll click Add again and select Add Animation Set from Current Selection. Let's rename the animation set. Now we'll click Rotate and a gizmo will appear. By moving the cursor over the central yellow node on the gizmo, a hand appears, which allows us to drag it to a new position. Hold down the control key and then the left mouse button and move the gizmo until the Z axis is aligned with the edge of the door where the door hinge would be. Now click Capture Keyframe. The keyframe is represented by a black diamond on the timeline at the zero second position. Now we'll drag the black timeline position bar to around three seconds. Again on the gizmo, there's a blue arc between the X and Y axis. We'll hover over the blue arc, again the cursor will change to a hand, and while holding down the left mouse button, we'll drag the arc to swing the door open. Let's open the door to around 90 degrees. We'll click Capture Keyframe again, so a second black diamond will be added to the timeline at the three second position. We'll copy the second keyframe a few seconds later. There's an option called PP, which stands for ping pong. Using ping pong, the door will open, stay open for a few seconds, and then close. So we could easily imagine how this could be used to simulate the repetitive process of a crane or other mechanical equipment. The animation of the door by itself is interesting, but it's really not until we incorporate that into a larger virtual building tour where we can extract more value. So now we use the scripter to create some instructions for how and when this animation will be triggered in a walkthrough. We'll create a script that plays the animation when we approach the door. Let's see how this is achieved. Stop the animator playback and uncheck PP, Infinite and Loop. From the Animation tab, we'll choose Scripter. We'll click Add New Script, renaming this. In the Events section, we'll click on the Hotspot icon. Now in the Properties section, click Pick, which will change the cursor to a crosshair. Now we'll click the center of the door, or near the handle. Let's change the radius to 6 feet. As a result, this hotspot is a sphere with a 6 foot radius positioned at the center of the door. When we enter that sphere, the event will be triggered. In the Actions section, we'll click Play Animation 
as the event to be triggered. Now in the Properties section, click the Animation drop-down, Band Scene 1, and select Conference Door Animation. Change Starting At from Start To, change Starting At from Start to Current Position. And now let's create a second script to close the door. Click Add New Script, renaming this Close Door. In the Events section, click Hotspot. Again, click Pick and click the center of the door. Again, changing the radius to 6 feet. We'll change trigger when from entering to leaving. In the action section, again, we click, we click play animation. Click the animation drop down, expanding scene one, and select conference door. Change starting at from start to current position, and change ending at from end to start. Now we're ready to try our scripts and interact with our and interact with our animation. Click on the Animation tab and choose Enable Scripts. Now as we walk within 2 meters of the door, now as we walk within 6 feet of the door, the event will be triggered and the door will open. If we then walk backwards or through the door, when we are again more than 6 feet away, leaving the hotspot, the leaving event will be triggered, playing the animation in, rever in, playing the animation in reverse and the door will close. Now with that door object animation, we're prepared to make a complete walkthrough where we can add this. In Navis, we can use real-time recorded walkthroughs to generate a realistic virtual experience of the design to then distribute or show to wider audiences. In such walkthroughs, we use the walking mode of navigating the model. And in that mode, we can apply a wide variety of walking modes to create the desired effect. Let's preview a few. By clicking Collision, we define a viewer as a collision volume in walk modes, which means they shouldn't pass through other objects, points, or lines in the scene view. Checking the gravity box gives a viewer some weight in walk mode so that they get lowered to the nearest surface plane. The crouch function works in connection with collision detection and is a function that enables us to crouch under any objects that are too low to walk under, a low pipe, for example, or a low beam. When third person is activated, we'll be able to see an avatar or a representation of ourself within the 3D model, thus giving us some scale. Remember, just as in video games, it always takes practice to get the eye-hand coordination of navigating the model, so be patient as you experiment with these tools. Here we'll record an animation that begins facing the building and at a distance. Our destination will be the first floor conference room. Let's see how we can get there. We've already enabled the walk mode of navigation. From the Save Viewpoint menu, click Record. Now we can begin holding the left mouse button and moving the mouse forward and up the screen to make us walk forward in the X direction. We target the front doors and in we go through the front doors to see the entranceway. Let's walk ourselves around so that we're facing the front doors from inside, essentially being where, around where the elevators are. Now holding down the center wheel button and moving the mouse up, we can move vertically in the space and float up to the first floor. From here we are positioned in front of the conference door. Let's see how approaching it will trigger the script we wrote earlier and open the door. There it opens and we can pass through. We'll walk up to the window and stop here at a point looking out of the window onto the plaza. 
We'll click Stop to end the recording, and here appears our complete animation, which we can play back and even export in order to show as many audiences as we'd like.